back, episode 53. All right, good to be back in studio. It's been a crazy long weekend. It has. We were out at the One Moto Show again this year. Dude, it's crazy there. I mean, we got dudes We got dudes flipping, we got dudes doing wheelies, we got yeah. you know, people drinking beers. Yeah, 300 bikes. Like, yeah. It's it's definitely wild. Yeah, merch, yeah. Uh, vendors, art. To even add to that, like it's been six months of design work to get to, yes, to this weekend. Totally. You know, so. Yeah, I was um, going to say, what wasn't at the One Show? That might be easier to say what was not there. Yeah. And on top of the one moto show, now that we're back, it's a uh, kind of game on. Yeah. We're going uh, you know, wide open full steam ahead at our own event, you know? Yep. Yeah. It's going to be a blast dude into the woods. It's yeah. I mean, it's coming up, it's coming quick, but your, your favorite designer is going to be speaking there. So yeah. Yeah. Check out the website and see if they, if they made the cut. Yeah, totally. It's been something that's been in the works for a long time. You know, we've been, been doing these company retreats for, you know, the last, whatever, seven, eight years of, of Lincoln. And we've always been asked like, Hey, can we come out to the retreat by different companies and clients? You know, totally. like, it'd be cool if we could sit in a, on a day at one of your retreats. And so we always kind of brainstormed, like, could we do it on a bigger level, you know, get a bigger place and maybe have some clients or designers or even people come out to, you know, to speak, to inspire us. Totally. So we finally pulled the trigger, you know, like a year and a half ago and said, Hey, let's do this thing. You know, let's do it on a bigger scale and do it out here in the Pacific Northwest. Beautiful location. Totally. So now we're three months out and it's game time. <laughs> it's coming quick. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. You know, and, and we wanted to do it big, you know, it's a little more of a destinational, you know, experience. The location is amazing. I mean, it's, you know, you would get married there. It's that type yeah. of, of venue so yep. you know you, you pair that with some of the speakers and workshops that are going to be there it's going to be a blast dude i yeah. can't wait for it yeah no it'll be cool tickets are limited it's going to be kind of a intimate small thing so uh get your tickets now and, and yeah. don't miss out on it shit yeah we'll see y'all there yep so yeah but now we're back in the studio gonna film another chop up and this is a uh, an exciting one yeah who are we gonna talk to a, a streetwear legend yeah benny gold all right pretty hyped on that yeah i don't know i don't remember last time we talked to him i think he was still doing benny gold full time since then he's he was uh kind of slowed that down a lot and uh you know gone to work at a, an agency so pretty cool to see kind of you know someone transition into the agency world you know i'm as I'm, I'm getting a little older i look to some of the the ogs and see what they're doing career-wise and you're like oh yep. shit okay that's what he's doing you know and yeah and uh yeah i think he's killing it you know for sure so yeah let's uh let's get him on the line and dig into it sick dude cool hey benny you there hey everybody i'm good how are you guys good thank you uh for taking time out of your schedule and uh and working this in man we're stoked to to sit down and talk it's been a while since we've you know chatted with you so excited to do to do this thanks yeah i'm excited about it when you guys hit me up i've been i was just ha more happy to catch up with you than anything if you can give a little history on kind of yourself and and the shop and the brand and and stuff like that for you know maybe some people that are watching who don't know the full story um if you kind of kick it back to in the beginning and and run through that quickly i think that'd be cool yeah i started just like everybody else you know i went to studied design in art school and you know moved out to california with a big dream to make it all happen and i just started making stickers you know as a reminder of myself on like why i'm what got me excited about graphic design and about skateboarding and everything and i started posting them around town and and those things just started taking off like people started recognizing them and wondering who was doing them and then when people found out it was me they were asking me for t-shirts and asked me to like make stuff up with them. So I started making, you know, random stuff, not to make money, you know, not to do anything, just, just to like, as a creative outlet. And that stuff just blew up as the point, like it got me noticed by Huff when he was opening his store and I started designing all the stuff for him. And then he, he said, put some of those t-shirts in the store. I did that. And all of a sudden I turn around, I have like international distribution and I, and 10 years after having a retail store for 10 years and, you know, doing the whole trade show thing and, and, and opening big box stores and having, you know, more demands on the brand, it's, it becomes a full circle and you start losing sight of the reason why you do things again. And so I just needed to change it up and decided to take a step back from the brand and join an advertising agency where I could just focus on being creative. I was kind of getting tired of managing and trying to figure out how to keep the lights on. And at the end of the day, all I really do care about is making stuff. And if you could give me the outlet to make stuff and and, you know, and enjoy that journey part of it. That's all I really care about. I mean, Dustin and I have talked about this, like starting a clothing line, a brand is probably one of the hardest things you can do. And then, you know, like you saw once, even if you do and it gets moving and it's, and it's, you know, 
gains traction and you got the shop and you got all this there is so much that goes along with owning that brand that has nothing to do with design you know it has zero to do with designing a t-shirt you know like there is so much there's 99 percent of it is all this bullshit and then the designing that that one or that collection of 10 t's or whatever it is is so such a small piece of it that's why when you got to see like what's the part that really gets you excited about things is it designing it is is it the business part of it or is it the fame of you having your name out there and for me it was it was about creating you know and i got caught up with the fame part of it too like just like anybody else does you get like you know, first time Hypebeast writes about you and puts you on there and you get excited and, you know, and Zoomies, Zoomies flies you out to do something and all of a sudden you're, that's exciting. And, you know, and in the end of the day, you can believe all your own bullshit and the ego keeps going. But, you know, the fun part for me is making the, making the stuff. Pre-booking orders, shipping orders, fulfillment, finding new printers, even if you got the best design in the world and, and the one printer goes out of business and you got to find a new one, it's... It just seems like an, an uphill battle forever, you know. Uh, it's one thing to have a clothing line for a, as a hobby, you know, and that's a bit easier because it's just a hobby. But, yeah, as soon as you want to try to turn a profit and, and have an overhead and have have retail spaces in San Francisco, I mean, that you're talk, that sounds quite stressful, honestly, you know. Yeah, but don't get me wrong. That whole journey was really fun. You know, like it was the first time you get like a, you know, the first time you make your first shirt is amazing. The first time you see someone that you didn't give the shirt to wearing it, you know, is, is amazing. And then when it grows and all of a sudden you have a semi truck full of t-shirts showing up at your warehouse, that's a great feeling too. And then, you know, and then after a while, I just, you know, you're like, you get caught up in the business side of things of keeping that whole train moving. And that, it was really fun to figure out how to figure all that stuff out. Cause I'm not a fashion designer by any means. I care more about the graphic that's on the shirt. And even the little labels and tags and all the trims, like that's the stuff that that I really enjoyed. But you know, it's it's fun to figure that stuff out. It's fun to like grow and and take see how far an idea could go, and then also to realize how you know that it's went far enough. How did you end up meeting Keith? You know, he's a legend. He, uh, yeah, great skate style. I mean, the brand aside, just as as skateboarding. You know, as a skateboard fan, um, how did you meet Keith? You know, I was living in California for a couple of years. I was working at these branding firms. Keith Hoffnagel moved back to San Francisco to open a shoe store. And the shoe store happened to be around the corner from my house. And one of my really, really, really good friends was like their second employee or something like that. And he said, hey, Benny, I know you really are you know, a fan of Keith skating. He just moved to here. Let's go skate together. And I was like, so excited. So we pushed around all day, skated, had a great day. The session's ending. We're down at the piers or somewhere like that. And and Keith was bitching about like, man, I just opened this store. I can't get a, a logo. A, I can't get a logo I like for this thing. He asked all the designers at Stussy, all the designers at Deluxe, DVS, all the, all his sponsors to make it for him. He didn't like anything he had. And I'm sitting there just, you know, not even thinking about anything, just happy to be part of the session. Because this is like, you know, my boyhood dreams are, fu- are fulfilling, but, you know, playing itself out right now and. And I'm just like, wow, I live in California. I'm in San Francisco and I'm skating with a guy who I've been looking up to my entire life. And I'm like, you know, drinking water or whatever I am. And then my my buddy lo- looks at Keith, looks at me and he goes, hey, Benny does logos. And Keith looks at me and goes, you do logos? And I was like, yeah, I can, I can do a logo. I work at a branding firm. And he's like, cool. I, and he gave me like a mini brief right there. He just said, I just wanted to be cool and linear. And I was like, all right. And I went home that night and I, called a couple of friends to like brainstorm some ideas, you know, just cause some, you know, to bounce the, bounce ideas back and forth. And I came up and I came up with this idea about an etch a sketch, you know, the concept of it. And I went down this street and bought one and wrote out half a couple of hundred times until it looked decent, you know, the redid, redid in the computer and I was, brought it down to him and he was like, that's it, you know? And that, and that was the beginning of a relationship. And then he's like, after the logo, he's like, well, we're going to need some t-shirts for, for the store. And I'm like, all right, I can make a t-shirt. So we made a couple of t-shirts and we made some more apparel and, you know, and the rest is history. And he was only selling out of one store at a time. And then I was there to watch it grow into what it is today. Did you have any revisions on that logo? I work out all the revisions in my head first and before I even show people, you know, so by the time I give you anything, like I've worked, I've reworked and worked that thing to death, you know? For someone like Keith who has a vision and knows what's cool, you know, like he made a career off of being cool and doing doing the right type of stuff. So he 
he had the vision to see it for what it was at the time. Not all clients are like that. Some clients just aren't creative and don't have the vision of stuff and you have to, and they feel like they need to put their fingerprint on it, you know, make it their own by like tweaking it a little bit. But somebody like Keith, you know, trust you and has confidence in himself to know what he likes and doesn't like. Were you nervous skating with him? I mean, I know you skate well as well, but I mean, we're talking about Huff. So were you nervous to skate with him? I know how it is when I go skate with somebody really good. I don't skate. I'll just chill, you know? Thinking back, I probably was a little nervous, but I was just more excited about everything. And and I've always been like, uh, I've never been a bystander. I've always been a participant, you know? So I was just, I'm just excited to be to be there at that moment and, and skate. Do you remember the spot? That's my last question. Do you remember <laughs> where you were at? Cause I know there's legendary spots down there. Back then, like everybody lived downtown. There's nowhere else to live in San Francisco. Like the whole entire SF skate community lived down in the Tenderloin basically, you know? Keith made a little more money, so he lived a little above the Tenderloin. I think it's crazy that you went and got a etch a sketch and then kind of worked it out on there first. That's that's that's, <laughs> that's commitment. Legit. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. I, I love that. That's the goal with design, right? You want design to always feel authentic and honest. Right? Yeah. You you could fake it and and try to fake what an etch a sketch looks like and stuff, but there's only one way to really know, and that's to, that's to get out there and do it. Let's go back and talk a little bit how we finally met in person um, for the first time. I think it was. It was crop out here in Portland, which was 18, I think 2018. And then you were the, uh, the headline speaker. So you flew out. We had a little opening party at our studio with our little mini ramp in the basement. So it was cool to finally meet you in person and, and come out and you hung out in Portland and yeah, it was a good time. You know, it's funny cause I don't really like to do those type of things, you know, and that was, I'm, and I, I remember leaving Portland, like I'm glad I did. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. I know you don't, you know, you're not like traveling around doing the speaking circuit or anything, you know, anything like that. So it was cool to have you come out, you know, and do that. We have in front of us, I don't think you can see right now, but we have in front of us the, we did that zine with uh, our graphics and, oh, and yeah. Lincoln awesome. graphics that we smashed together. That was, that was fun. Dustin laid that whole thing out and that thing turned out rad does say volume one on the cover um <laughs> which is you know there is a opportunity for one day to be volume two so i might just be you know shooting my shot uh you know hell mary here but uh i do see it says volume one so <laughs> we should we should do volume two that'd be fun i got a lot more work nowadays so we could do it okay yeah we'll we'll, we'll make that happen let's dig in a little bit into uh the agency and how you're doing there and kind of you know if you can even share a couple projects or just kind of how that's all unfolding for you. Yeah. The agency has been great. I feel, you know, super valued and everything. And I was really nervous about making the transition. I just knew I needed to make a transition at the time. And I wasn't sure what I'm a firm believer. If you put things out into the universe and, you know, and, and talk it into, into reality, things happen. So I started telling certain friends that I was looking to make a transition and from the brand into something else. I just didn't know what it was. I thought it was going to be more brand side again, like tech or something. In this, but every, every interview I went to with, with these tech firms are talking about like my management style and it, what it was, wasn't about creativity and making things. And then all of a sudden I got a call from, from this advertising agency called, you know, could be Silverstein and partners. And they said, Hey, heard you're looking to make a change. And I said, I am, but no offense, not in advertising. And, <laughs> and they said, just Damn. come talk to us. And I went and talked to him and the owner was so cool. This guy, Rich Silverstein that, you know, we all know, and he's done everything and we studied him in college and everything. And, and he looked at me and he's, and he, and he asked the right questions and said, talked about making things. And he's like, let's just make cool shit together. And if you don't like it, don't stay. And I was like, man, that's exactly what I need to hear at the moment. I just wanted to make cool shit again. And that was it. And so I signed on, it's been four and a half years now and, and they give me great stuff. You know, I've done a lot of warrior stuff with them. I've done really cool branding work for Specialized. And and they're not trying to force me into being anything I'm not. Like, they let me be me there, which is really important to my creativity also. It does seem like you're just right in your flow and, and you know, in your bag, as the kids say, and, and just having fun. Yeah. How many how many people are at the the agency? They, they sit around 350 people. Wow. That's... Okay. That's big. Yeah. That's, yeah. uh, that's proper. Honestly, it's been great. It's been a blessing for my work to tell you the truth. Cause after working by for yourself for so long in a bubble and also being the boss, like nobody really challenges your work as much as it needs to be challenged sometimes. 
you know, and, and just seeing the way other people work and other, other people design, like I've learned and grown so much in the last couple of years and I'm fast as shit nowadays <laughs> where, where before <laughs> I was really slow because it was all in my timeline. You know, when you're starting to think about, you know, closing down the shop and, and, you know, getting a job or doing a changing career is that you definitely did not want to do the ad agency, you know, route. Um, is there a reason for that? Advertising from the outside world looks sleazy and slimy, you know, it's like, right. You're selling, you know, sugar drinks and, and candy and that type of stuff. And, you know, and I'm a, I'm a man of morals and convictions and that type of stuff. And I just didn't really see how I fit in an av I didn't, I watched Mad Men, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Yep. And, and I didn't picture myself as that, as that slick type of character, you know, like everything I've always done has done, done it from the heart and, and cause I care about it. I thought it was just going to be a stepping stone to tell you the truth. I was just going to you know, get my foot wet in there, like figure, and then figure out what's next for me. But I really think I found a home there. Like I feel valued. I love everyone I work with my work. The people in the agency make my work better. You know, they see stuff that I have that I don't see and have suggestions and for it. And, and that's really helpful. And hopefully that one day I can do that for young creatives too. You guys have there like an academy, right? Like a like, what is that? Can you kind of explain that to us as far as the academy and it's like an intern program that you can sign up for at the agency? I think what's happening with advertising, what's happening a lot in industry is that, I mean, we see it in skateboarding. I saw it in, we saw it in streetwear is that you get the same perspective and the same type of person interested in it. Like skateboarding to me has always been a peer group of me and my friends. And we've all pretty much have similar mindsets. And advertising has the same thing. You know, it's, they all went to the same schools. They all worked at the same agencies. They all worked their way up and stuff. And so the academy is a way to give people that might not have those same opportunities a, a shot, you know, and give and expose them to something that they normally wouldn't be exposed to. And then we could learn and then we could get a different perspective on the stuff we're working on. So the work will get better and the people coming into the agency will get better too. And they'll make us better. Well, we were fortunate enough to meet uh, Carlos, who I think ended up just going through that whole deal and, and getting hired on full time, right? Man, today is his first day. Oh, today, today? is? Damn. Oh, shit. And I told him tomorrow he's going to have to get me coffee. <laughs> <laughs> nice. For, for a w couple months at least, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. And the new guy has to buy lunch too, right? Yeah. yeah. Hopefully for not not for 350 people, but yeah. <laughs> nah, he could just, just for our design department. Our design department's about 11 people. He could, uh, he could buy it for that. So you talked about the Warriors project. Do you, you don't follow basketball? The fact that they won last night and they're moving on. Are you guys still doing work for them? I followed enough to know all that stuff, and I'm a I'm a fan, and I love to see what it does to the community. But I'm not like a diehard watch every game fan. Yeah, that's cool. Between you and me, and I guess everyone who's listening to this, um, <laughs> I I I rebranded them coming out in the 24-25 season. Ooh, that's huge. You know, we worked on it through the agency and, um, yeah, because they had a mark, they, they, they had a mark that they didn't like that much. And it had, it was just a W and they wanted something that has a little more meaning to the team. So they approached me about helping them out and giving it a purpose and meaning. And I'm really happy with what, what we came up with and I can't wait to, for the world to see it. That's Damn, crazy. Yeah. Dude. That's crazy. I mean, there's a couple of things we hold in high regards here. Um, and that's something we kind of forget about and brush over. And yeah, to rebrand a sports team, any sports team like that, major, you know, major league, that's major. So what was back in the day, favorite streetwear brand? Like I used to love Ten, Ten Deep so much. They may be still around, but they're not what they were. Like what was your favorite? I mean, other than yours, like you have a favorite streetwear brand from that era? And Ten Deep is great. I love Scott and everything he's done with it. And he's a good friend too. And you know, my favorite streetwear brand will forever be Stussy just because they crossed into skateboarding when I was a young kid. But growing up in South Florida, the brand Pervert had the hugest impact on me. And it was my favorite streetwear brand of all time. I mean, they're one of the four, you know, forefathers of streetwear. And we all had these, <laughs> these basketball jerseys and you couldn't get away with this stuff now at all. But it was a, it was a, it was a legit basketball jersey and it said, Pervert on the back and 69 was the number on it. And if you had that jersey, it was the coolest thing to wear around Miami. 
what era? Like, just to give some context here, like talking nineties, two thousands. That's way early nineties. Like maybe even 89, 90, 91, you know, like, heck yeah. We're going to have to look that up. You know? Yeah. I always think about those old brands and what those dudes are doing. You know, um, they're maybe even still around now. I just, I'm not seeing them like even the crooks and castle guys, like, uh, man, that shit was yeah. my favorite. They yeah. like owned the whole space. Like, where are they at now? You know? And I'm sure they're doing stuff, but <laughs> even the pervert guys, uh, I'm assuming they're guys, but, uh, what are they doing? You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, they may have their hands in other clothing companies we're not aware of so it's just fun to kind of <laughs> the alumni of streetwear you know it's cool that was like early 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 streetwear before i got like it was so it was just regional you know where i got where i got fortunate to be on the wave of street the next wave of streetwear where it became you know past your hometown and past your group of friends where it turns into people that i never met that know, knows about the stuff you're doing and nowadays they they seem to be just smarter like everything's a pre-order which damn like back in the day i felt like that was taboo i mean i could be wrong but now it's like that is the move i wish we and everybody was allowed to do pre-orders back in the day because yeah i sat on a bunch of bullshit still have it you know uh, i'm sure a lot of people inventory it's just risky you know so we were only pre-ordering to, to stores because they you know they had to order a certain amount to fill their shops but there was a couple of brands that were only that started doing pre-order direct to customer and we thought that was whack because they were like if you don't believe enough in your product, how do you expect anyone else to believe in it? You know, if you don't spend, cause you need to make the investment to make the thing that you love is, is the way we look at it. And now it's, and now everybody pre-orders, you know, and that's, it's just smarter business than what we're doing, but we weren't doing it for business. We are we're, we're not business people. We're, it was all stuff for passion. Like we only made stuff that we wanted to wear. If you love Stussy, you gotta just like Supreme by default, assuming. I mean, I know nowadays it's probably a little taboo to have the box logo, but we still, you know, yeah. I'm assuming, yeah, did, are you a big street, uh, Supreme fan? I'm always a Supreme fan. You know, a lot of my friends work there now and and they actually offered me a job many, many, many years ago, you know, but my brand was really starting to pop off. They. They offered it to me when I was, you know, designing all the stuff for Huff. I was still with Huff at the time. And they're like, yeah, you should move to New York and work with us and design t-shirts. And, and I was like, nah, I, I want to make my own shirts and stay in California. And, and, you know, and for better or worse, I made my decisions. Yeah, I would say it worked yeah, out. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I would say it was a good call for I sure. Mean, yeah, because now it's the flip side. I mean, I think, uh, I don't know who the art director was there now, but, you know, Noah is now a big brand doing its own his own thing. So it's kind of like you just did that from the gate you know, anyways, you know, just, let's just go ahead and do that from the start. And it's inspiring to see what you could do with streetwear with unlimited budgets, you know, like I've always thought like, man, if I just had a little more money, this thing could be even that much cooler, you know? And then you look <laughs> at Supreme, you're like, they took what already is cool and then put it on steroids and, and it, you know, and it's just cool to see the reach you could have and, and how many waves you can make with a little bit more money and influence. Totally. I mean, they did a collab with, uh, with Airstream. So, I mean, that's, that's gnarly. <laughs> Talk about inventory and the <laughs> shipping so and, you know, all those things we were talking about. That's crazy. Trailer. Yeah. And, you know, and you love those Airstreams. You're like, man, if I had a chance to mess with that, who, who knows what could happen? Heck yeah. Well, I was saving one of my questions for the very end. So, uh, we see all the slappies happening. You got a favorite <laughs> slappy trick? Cause you got some good ones in the, I think in the I back. See yeah. Crook. What is it? 270 out or something? I like all those slappy transfer tricks, like slappy no slide transfer, slappy no slide to crook to pop over those type of tricks. So are you going for a curb or a parking block if you had to choose, uh, you know, one obstacle to slappy? It depends on the move, you know, it's all those like weird technical ones. I prefer a, a platform at the top, like a, like, you know, like a normal curb, like all those weird one, 180 to, to fake to fakey five O's or switch nose grinds, whatever you want to call them. Those I want a, I want a platform, but if I'm doing like really really clean, clean slappy no slide popovers, you know, just a, just a long curve is fine. Well, Benny, it was cool to catch up. Um, I'm excited for uh, kind of your next adventure and, and you at the ad agency and stuff. I was pretty stoked to see that. Just having it, you know, doing the agency thing in the studio for the last whatever 18 years, and then to see you go in that direction and thrive, I think is is great. Um, so yeah. And just keep it, keep killing it, man. Thanks, Dan. I would, yeah, I've always been impressed with what you got going on up there. And, and who knows, maybe my future might be something like what you guys have going. I don't really talk about it much, but my original vision was more what you're doing and less clothing brand. 
you know, my first store was, was design studio first and small, small pop-up place for making t-shirts and the t-shirts blew up, you know, like once they made them, they, they, I was like, this is much more easier money than dealing with clients. So I chilled on the client work, started making t-shirts. People told me I was dumb and I should do it all, all, all together at once, but I'm a, I'm an all in type of person, you know, all or nothing. Yep. But maybe the future will be something like you have more like a design studio again. That was because that was the original vision. You had that sign at the stairs going up that said like design studio upstairs or whatever. And I was always like, oh, that's so sick. I remember yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. I wanted to work there actually yeah. at the time. I totally remember that. Yeah. Yeah. That's rad. That was the original vision. I guess I felt like I got sidetracked by t-shirts, you know, and, and, and hippies fame. It looks like it worked out and I, I think it was great. So yeah. And there's know. still time. So I mean, yep. we're, we and I am still excited to see, yeah, what happens? What's the future? What's the future of the clothing side? What's the future of the, yeah. the branding side and all that? Yeah. It'll be more holistic this time, you know, not just all, all, all eggs in one basket. Good to hear. Well, we're fans stoked to, uh, to know you and, and everything. And yeah, it was great to catch up, man. Yeah. Heck yeah. Excited to get working on this, uh, you know, volume two yeah. zine here one zine, of these days, uh, you know, yep. so that'll, <laughs> that'll be a lot of fun. We got your, uh, we got your poster from crop here. So we got that bad oh, boy. So fun. Yeah. They, we, they were printing, <laughs> got some old, uh, I don't even think you can see this will pop it in, but it's the old, uh, one of your old patches. Um, so oh, yeah, fun. we can, yeah. Anti-workwear stuff. Yeah. Yep. Hell yeah. yeah. Really fun. Cool. All right, man. Well, thank you for your time, and let's uh, let's keep in touch. Yeah, and thanks for having me as a guest. I really appreciate it. You know, it means Heck a lot, yeah, dude. Cool. So that was great. Yeah, dude. That always, was pretty inspiring, man. Always cool to talk to to Benny. Yeah, I mean, I always like to look up and you know hear from some OGs. So, yeah. um, yeah. If that was inspiring, we have another event coming up that could be just as inspirational absolutely into the woods is coming up quick dude, uh yeah. i think three months out now midsummer dude yep. yeah get your trunks ready you yeah. know get your trunks ready and get your collar shirt ready because we're going to be you know <laughs> doing some keynotes in the day and we're going to be swimming at night so it's going to be awesome yeah yeah if you haven't uh, heard it or or seen it um check it out into the woods con.com creative conference we are hosting and putting on out here in the columbia river gorge yeah it's gonna be a great time your favorite designers for sure going to be either speaking or teaching a workshop so go ahead and uh check out the website and see you know see if they're on the list yep right on that was it that was a good episode like subscribe comment yeah uh into the woods jump online instagram follow that um go grab some tickets and we'll see you guys out here in the pacific northwest this summer hell yeah 